you know, in August, I let you pick whatever book you wanted. I want you to be able to choose stories that you can relate to. And in September, you're going to get to pick, starting even today, whatever book you want again, okay? One that you're interested in. Um, I don't like to focus on, you know, like reading levels and things like that because, like she said there at the end, if you're interested in a book, you rise to the occasion. I love to challenge myself to harder, more difficult books, and in turn, it makes me a better reader, but I have to be interested in it. There will be some books throughout the year that we do read together, but then I always like to supplement that with you having a lot of choice in this classroom um, because I think that's so important for you to be choosing what you're reading because you all have different interests. So based on what we know about Nikki Grimes and uh, you know, kind of her story and her upbringing, we're gonna read this poem together. So let me open it up. It is called Truth. It is called Truth. So let's, I'm gonna open this up on my screen. Yes, yay, it's letting me download, excellent. It's very short. Um, so I'm gonna read this really brief synopsis real quick. We already learned some of this in the video. All right, so here we go. Nikki Grimes, as we learned, you know, is an author, poet, journalist. She does it all, right? She's an award-winning um, author for books written for children and young adults. Now, young adults books can span anywhere from 10, 11 years old to 18 year old. So that is a wide um, genre. So I don't want you guys to think young adult books are only for, you know, kids in intermediate or kids in elementary. Young adult books can span all the way until 18 even. Um, this poem first appeared in the book One Last Word, which was a collection inspired by poems from the Harlem Renaissance that follow the golden shovel form. This is an interesting form and it might be new to you. So here's how it works. In this poetic form, the poet takes a striking line from an inspirational poem and uses words from that inspirational line in a new poem. So it's kind of like you take one little pieces of a poem and you use it in your poem. The striking line then appears word for word at the end of the lines in a new poem. You'll see that in this poem, they're bolded, okay? So this poem uses the first line of Gene Toomer's storm ending as its striking line, okay? So we can see those words bolded. She stole those from the first lines of this other poem, storm ending. So it's kind of a way to do like a mashup. Um, kind of how like some like cool DJs will do like mashups of songs. This is very similar, but just in poetry, okay? What I'm gonna have you do is take a silent 20, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, depending on your pace. And I'd like you to read through this poem. So let's take a moment, read through Truth by Nikki Grimes. The truth is every day we rise is like thunder. A clap of surprise could be echoes of trouble or blossoms a blessing you never know what garish or gorgeously disguised memories to be might rain down from above so look up claim that cloud with the silver lining our job if you ask me is to follow it see where it heads all right let's take this line by line for a moment um something i want to mention when you're reading poetry as opposed to saying this is from paragraph one paragraph two every single line so the truth is every day we rise is like thunder. That's one line. Then the next line, a clap of surprise could be echoes of trouble or line two, blossoms, line three, okay? That's how these lines work. Um, when you're citing in your graphic organizer in a moment, that's gonna be important. But let's take this line by line, okay? So the truth is every day we rise is like thunder, a clap of surprise. So this is essentially saying when we wake up in the morning, right? That's like, this kind of like surprise, this gift. Like I can even envision like my feet hitting the floor, kind of like a clap of thunder, right? Now you could rise in the morning and it could be a day of trouble, right? Or it could be this like blossoming day of beauty. So that's kind of like the choice we have in the morning, right? You never know what garish or gorgeously disguised memories to be might rain down from above. So we don't know what the day is gonna bring us, right? could be something wonderful, could be something hard. Um, we're not sure. We uh, don't know what's going to be in our day. We're not given that information, right? So what she's saying, what Nikki Grimes is saying here, look up, claim that cloud with the silver lining. Can someone tell me what that means? Like literally when you've seen a cloud before, there's beautiful like light behind it and you see a silver lining around the cloud. But when people say, hey, 
look at the silver lining here. They're not talking about like looking at a cloud in the sky. What are they saying with that? Any ideas? Let me share an example. My lovely sweet dog, Charlie, peed all over our chair this weekend. I was pretty upset. However, the silver lining of the situation is now I get to have some people come in and clean all of the upholstery in our living room. And if you know me, I love to be clean. And I love it when people clean things for me. That makes me even more happy. There's a silver lining in that story. So what does it mean when people say, look for the silver lining? It's so good. Yeah. Like it's on the back. Right, side. Thank you, Adam. Yeah, look for the good, look for the positive, right? I was so mad at Charlie, like, come on, man. The floral chair, that's, that's you know, we were gonna pee this morning, not outside in the backyard. But man, am I pumped to come have my carpets cleaned. I cannot wait, my house is gonna be smelling so fresh. Um, so that's the silver lining. So Nikki Grimes here is saying, claim that cloud with the silver lining. Look for the positives, look for the positives. Our job, if you ask me, is to follow it. Follow those positive thoughts, right? And see where they head. Odds are they're gonna head you into a positive direction, right? So this poem is taking like, we don't know where our day is gonna end up, where it's gonna be, but we can kind of point ourselves towards the positive. That's what Nikki Grimes is trying to say in this poem, okay? So what I'm gonna have you do is I need you guys to open up your graphic organizer, have this poem up too if your canvas is working, all right? And we're gonna add some significant details about happiness from this poem to our graphic organizer, okay? And here's where the free answers are coming, so make sure you're paying attention. Okay, guys, I've got my graphic organizer open. I've already got one, uh, actually two lines on here. This counts as one piece of evidence. All right, so check this out. You never know what garish or gorgeously disguised memories to be might rain down from above. Lines three through four. I consider this a significant detail about happiness because it might be happy memories that are raining down on you one day. So I could kind of back that up with some of my own personal experiences and make that about happiness. So I would like you guys to copy this one down on your graphic organizer. Super great one, super great free answer. Page. We've got, notice how there's a second period column. All right, I'm going to show you my example. So I actually just finished this book, Keep Moving, yesterday or the day before. It's by Dick Van Dyke. He was in the original Mary Poppins, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Dick Van Dyke show, loads of other things. He's a fabulous actor, um, dancer, hilarious guy. So I listened to his autobiography. So in the top, I put the book title plus the author, Keep Moving by Dick Van Dyke. I gave it four hearts. You can use whatever emoji you would like to use for your book. Um, out of five, however many you think out of five. And then a very brief and enticing description. Do not give away the ending, friends. This is a, um, a description, like what's it about? So I said, Keep Moving is an autobiography narrated by Dick Van Dyke. In this whimsical book, he shares truths and ideas about how to live well longer. With over 90 years of life experiences and still a pep in his step, this book definitely changes your perspective on appreciating life. Mrs. Cox, because I wrote that, okay? I then also included a picture of the book title. So there's that guy who wrote it. Keep moving. All right, you'll notice that I've got other people in my next class who they started to post theirs as well. So this person did Dog Man for Whom the Ball Rolls. He gave it five stars. He's got his little description and then a picture of the book title as well with his name, okay? So you're going to do this in second periods column for your book that you read and finished in August, okay? I wanna give you time to do this. We got about 10 minutes before we're out of here. That should be plenty of time for you to add to the Padlet. Good luck, guys. <laughs>